Motion by Helmut. Welcome to Minutes by Minute, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township, you know those government entities that make laws and regulations that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. Whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that you went and elected. And the commissions and the committees that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you chose to go to that meeting or not, and the result can be a... Taxing. Situation. <laughs> hey, we could. Nice cue. Yeah, nice, yeah, way to come in there, segue. Anyway, um, the reason why we want to talk about this, um, a lot of the stories, is that we can condense them from the size they normally are in these meetings, from two and a half Save to three hours digest. to, yeah, 15 <laughs> minutes is minutes by minute. We but, can pretty much condense it. And these meetings could last as much, long as three hours, depending. Yep. And uh, if you chose to do that, we have a website, occtv.org. Click on programs and every single meeting in its entirety, no editing involved, <laughs> will be there for you. And yep. It's all arranged in reverse date order, so you can just pick them and choose them. And it's unedited. I want you to know that it's illegal. You know, FCC says no editing yeah, for these meetings. So it's in, in their entirety. So if you want to know exactly what went on, be prepared. Get all those chips and refreshments on the side. Be prepared for a couple of hours, maybe, and viewing. Right? That's right. <laughs> And, you know, you never know what you may learn. Right. What <laughs> there is, though, is a lot of humor, and we condense the humor out of this as well. Uh, some of the humor kind of is evident, you know, that it comes back to get you. As he said, taxes. <laughs> That's a lot mm -hmm. of humor there. Uh, but also there's dark, other issues that... Dark, humor. <laughs> to the top, yes, dark humor. <laughs> and so we try to bring this humor out as we talk you know, about these meetings. And the meetings that I want to talk about today is the Oxford Area Charter Cable Commission meeting. Uh, you were there, right? Yes, I were. Okay, and we'll discuss that further. I speak in the plural. <laughs> you were. Okay, the Oxford Village ZPA, Zoning Board of Appeals also, was held on May 6th, and we're going to discuss that, and a few little toppers, <clears throat> if we can top them off. Okay? Okay. All right, here we go. The Oxford Area Charter Cable Communications Commission. Actually, it's the Oxford Area Cable Communications Commission. I knew he was going to chime right in there. See what I mean about but we humor? not only there have charter, is. we also have AT and T. We do, AT and T. Yep. And we've moved all that real nifty equipment from 1775 Lapeer Road, the old location. Which, even though you may go by the building and it says OCTV, we're not there anymore. Right. <laughs> so yeah. So if they try to convince you that you can come in and uh, you know get various productions there, uh-uh, don't do it. <laughs> but now we're attached to the Parks and Rec building at 2795 mm -hmm. Seymour Lake Road, Suite yep. A. And it's a beautiful location, I want to say. Uh, they're going to have a, a grand opening coming up sometime in June okay. for the station. So we'll give you the dates uh, Hopefully later Hopefully I'll on. be there, not on my little trip. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you taking a trip? I'm taking a trip. Where? Mississippi? Down a river. Down the river, Close, Mississippi River. No, no. No? No. What river? Blue Danube. Blue Danube. Hey, there's a song. Is I there? hope it's blue. I hope it's navigable. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't have rivers here in the United States? Yes, they do. <laughs> you didn't, didn't want to use any of them? But they don't have these weird pronunciations. <laughs> I see. Yeah, he's into weird pronunciations. No question about that one. But anyway, let's get back to the Oxford Area uh, Charter Cable uh, meeting. Uh, they did the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Ed Hunwick is the chair for this particular committee. Uh, Char Sotherby serves as the uh, pro tem. Maureen Helmuth is on this board. She's a representative from the village. And Jacob Newby, who's a representative from Addison Township. And Bill Dunn, who was absent at this particular time. I think he was on vacation. Well deserved, Bill Dunn. Was his alternate here? Uh, no, his, al his alternate was not there. No. Okay. Uh, Dave Kenny was there, though. I was. And I was my own alternate. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bill Service, of course, the uh, station manager was there, mm -hmm. and uh, Terry Stiles. Absolutely. Who was our executive director in production, right? Yep. All right. So the agenda immediately approved. Minutes, February eleventh, two thousand nineteen, immediately approved as well. Uh, bills uh, for one twenty one through four fifteen. Get this, 
and you probably wrote these numbers down, $198,186.94. You wait long enough for a meeting, it really rolls up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, it's been a while since you had your last meeting. Well, an awful lot of that expense, of course, was moving here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that, that transition was quite, uh, shall I say, detailed? You betcha. Yep. Okay, so anyway, uh, you folks are invited, of course, to come to the station anytime you'd like, and they'll give you a quick tour. Uh, but the grand, as I say, the grand opening ribbon cutting is going to be coming up in June. Um, there was a question uh, from Mr. Hunwick, uh, the chairman, about $4,500 uh, amount that was spent on the budget, and that was for the new server that we had to get. It's called Elgin Needs a New Toy. <laughs> no, but no. we did have a server that was acting a little weirdly, and uh, it was time to replace it. It was old. Right. <laughs> it was about 14 years old, roughly. Yeah. And uh, before that, though, we had an issue with the Nexus, which is how the information gets switched in and out. Oh. Uh, and that particular unit would have cost us roughly about fifteen to $16,000 to replace. But fortunately, we were able to look at it electronic-wise and replace the power supply in it for, I think, a little over, what, $300? And a then they bargain were... at any price. Yeah, right. So that unit is working great, as you folks are watching Charter, AT&T can attest to that. Uh, so anyway, I have to keep it up and running. We are using the old server temporarily as a backup mm -hmm. uh, because we're able to repair and get it going again. Elgin hates throwing stuff away. <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> I actually have this storage area, and I told Bill, uh, who was the uh, station manager, I said, we need a bigger space for storage. He says, no, you need to reduce what you have that you're saving. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm sharing. It's kind of like our attic. Right, I'm sharing that space with a uh, with the company van, so with a station van. So we may have to move the van out to keep it accumulating I think, stuff. <laughs> but you know, I think that's kind of neat, because that's kind of like my second office. I have a radio and in the van and all kinds well, of things. You should be squeezed into a corner by <laughs> right, now. Right. <laughs> right. But anyway, so some of this equipment comes in handy. Um, we did lose a, I'm trying to think, yeah, DVD drive. No. Uh, so that was replaced, you ordered it. Yep. Rather inexpensive to do that. That'll be on the next meeting that you talk about that one. Yeah, more absolutely. Likely. Okay. So anyway, those are the, ex the excuses as to what happened. Um, the, the server itself, as he pointed out, it was just old. And when it's transferred, old. we did bring the power up on it, did operate at first, and then it, when next time we tried to power it up, it just would not power up. So we did an analysis on it, discovered that it was a power supply. And the company that produces this particular equipment is from Michigan. Yeah. Well, so we were able to make pretty good contact there. And the server <clears throat> had all my files, and so <laughs> I was going around going, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. He did, just like Chicken Little. He was running off. <laughs> And everybody else is saying, our system doesn't work, our system doesn't work. <laughs> so anyway, we did take care of that. We'll talk more about it when we come back right after this. <laughs> By minute, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about what went on in the uh, what Communications Commission meeting, yep. which was held on April 29th. And uh, we're at the point where we're discussing equipment, you know, that we had to replace at the station, justifiably. And we have it in the budget, by the way, Bill Hamlin. So we're in good shape there. Um, he, this guy here really keeps an eye on the budget. So it's good. I said, do we have any more money? Yeah, we're getting close. Get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, if there's more money, he says, I'm afraid to tell you. <laughs> That's the way it works. Um, year to date. When I start uh, checking my pockets, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> right, right. Uh, year to date uh, revenue and expense report for 2019 was received and filed. And uh, the OACC 
invoice journal ledger distribution report for January, February, March. Boy, there were a number of months, weren't there? Yeah, there were. Uh, 2019, they were received and filed as well. Then, um, summary of new uh, building construction was given by Bill Service. He said, you know, gave a, a history and a background as to where we are now in terms of operation. Um, he said that the, the brick is to be completed on, outside of the building. They are working on, going to work on the parking lot pretty soon. That's right, they? that's right. They, they've put underground drains in. They're going to be building a sidewalk mm -hmm. in the very near future. And after that is done and set and cured and whatever, uh, then we're gonna, they're gonna pave this big parking lot. They are, yeah. It should be and pretty nice when it's finished. And it's a great facility. That won't just be ours, that'll also be for the whole parks and rec area too. Yeah. This is a great facility, I think, uh, for our production. It was laid out in design, you know, for this particular purpose. Mm -hmm. The other building, we're kind of circumventing things. We do have an issue with echo, which you folks will understand this as we're talking. You'll hear a little echo. Um, we're going to resolve that issue with what they call baffles, which go above the ceiling. Uh, and there may be some wall treatment that might have to be made as well. But we'll take care of this echo situation, right? Yep. Right? <laughs> right? You got it. Okay. You were right. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay. We got it. Okay. Uh, so the parking lot should be going in within the next week or so mm -hmm. here, depending on the weather, of course. Um, and by the way, this whole construction thing came in under budget. Absolutely. Which is, was a fantastic feat. And that was through the help of uh, Ron Davis, Parks and Recreation. And I want to say Jeff, too. Jeff Jones, yeah. Yep. Um, he oversaw. They did a them. terrific job. Yep. Can't say enough about those guys. Uh, watched every penny. And by the way, the work that was done here was, I would say, 99, 9 tenths percent done by local contractors. Absolutely. You know, all yeah. Oxford Township people. So, so it was great a benefit job. to everybody around. Right. Uh, by the way, there's going to be on the ballot coming up, I think, in August, um, a Parks and Rec request, you know, for millage. Uh, right. They got denied a millage before on, right. a, on a previous. Is it, is it called a referendum? Uh, no, it would be a millage. It would, would be considered a referendum, okay. I guess. But, uh, yeah, uh, they want to do some improvement here. They were going mm -hmm. to build an ice skating rink, mm -hmm. which uh, that millage would have helped pay for, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe this time they will. Well, it's amazing what they can do with the amount of <coughs> funding that they have for all the parks in this area. And Ron That's right. Davis not just Seymour Lake Park is, mm -hmm. you know, the biggest and most developed, but you've got one by Oxford Lake. You've got one by uh, Powell. Is it mm -hmm. Powell, Powell Lake? That's Powell yeah. Lake. And also on Oakwood Road, a beautiful uh, yeah. nature walk kind of a, uh, a park. And they maintain these parks with, <coughs> I think, unlimited resources of mm -hmm. people. I think they have seven employees that work you know mm. it's amazing they work <laughs> uh, right so ron is very concerned about getting this millage that you folks should vote for it out there mm. if you enjoy you know what you have going and and also mm. the development in the future and what they plan on doing ice skating rinks and so forth um oh, you need to vote stony for lake it. park in stony lake park right that's, can't forget stony that's lake a big that's park nice park. system we have here yeah right on the lake there too so anyway uh, you folks consider that in August. Uh, special millage will be coming up. Uh, open house uh, was held uh, Tuesday on the 7th, uh, and it was quite successful, mostly business people coming through. Mm -hmm. They also, it was an open house for, um, what is the building next to us? That, well, immediately next to us is the new senior center. Senior center. Which yeah. was just completed, and next to it is the new community center, which was built along with the uh, Parks and Rec office building when uh -huh. they built that. So we're all connected. <laughs> so the business people were given pretty much a, you know, a, a tour of all these uh, mm -hmm. different building chambers. So and they, I think they were quite impressed from the feed, feedback that we had. But keep in mind that they're gonna have a ribbon cutting, as I said, in June. So uh, pay attention to the leader newspaper. I'm sure information will be in there as we'll be uh, talking later about dates you know, on OCTV. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, I think that date, by the way, if you want to put it in, this could be a rumor, would be June 6th. So that is just a rumor. Unconfirmed. Unconfirmed. Now, <laughs> you're supposed to confirm those. Not today. Not today, okay. <laughs> uh, handbook review it was part of the issue. Um, so everything was agreed upon that they're going to go forward after the review. 
And uh, that actually has been presented to all the employees here at the station. Um, and they have to sign at the end of it that they've read it. Um, all the way. All the way, yep. I and did read it all the way. It's a long document. It's a long document, but it's very thorough. Yeah, I said as I read this, Dave Kinney must have put this together. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean, it's, all the I's were dotted, the T's were crossed, and I think it was signed, Dave Kinney. I mean, <laughs> Well, it was put together by experts. It was. People that took issue with the experts yeah. and yeah. other experts. And I think Bill Dunn, from the township standpoint, had some help in this thing, too, right? Sure, sure. Okay. There, there were minor tweaks, but yep. the, the well, main body is, is pretty much I think it's successful intact. after, what, five years? <laughs> yeah, I, Talk I, about I, dipping yeah. it in and wringing it out. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good document. It covers pretty much all yep. the issues. But yep. um, then the next statement or question was about the ground lease agreement, which was between the Parks and Rec and OCTV. Right. We own the building. The ground under us is owned by Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. I, I think we lease the property for a dollar a year or something, right? Right, right. Yeah. And, and I was... Another involved document. <laughs> I was telling Ron the other day, I said, no parking lot. We're supposed to have a parking lot. That means we only pay 50 cents a year. <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> Pretty much went down the, the limit there. Don't push him. No, I don't. Want, I, yeah. Fortunately, he has a good sense of humor. So he said he has to be in order to be in the parks and rec business. But anyway, um, let me see. What else do we have? Uh, Oakland County investment pool. Okay, that was received in file. You know more about that, and it's mm -hmm. an economic thing. Uh, and for the benefit, of course, for the station. New business, uh, charter spectrum, contract negotiations. Uh, Terry Stiles is working with that. Uh, it has to do with peg fees, and uh, we, that's a long subject. And if you want to see more, go to occtv.org. That's right. And you'll the see the it franchise there. agreement is is running out now, and they have to renegotiate the new one. Right. Uh, that there means was, all four <clears throat> municipalities. Right. There's some question about bringing in uh, outside attorney, uh, Mr. Watsa, Mike Watsa, mm -hmm. but that's been uh, since. Right, shelved. right. Uh, so he, that's not going to happen. Had, there's a uh, sub-organization in his law firm called Protect, mm -hmm. which specifically is oriented towards uh, protecting the interest of uh, peg stations that mm -hmm. we are and mm -hmm. throughout Michigan. Well, the big advantage we have here is Terry Stiles is probably the most knowledgeable person, I think, has to do with uh, the legal entities mm -hmm. deals with this subject. So, you know, I don't think Mr. Watts would provide any more than what Terry can provide. Right. So that right. is the truth, and I'm sticking by it. <laughs> okay. Uh, tech committees, nothing going on there. Um, manager's report, Bill uh, Service gave a quick report. Uh, said that school sports is the number one thing in viewerships, and uh, concerts would be number two. And as I say, you want to see more, go to occtv.org and click on the particular party of interest and check it out. We'll talk more about that when we come back right after this. Back to Minutes by Minute. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Now, we have just finished with OCTV, uh, and now we're going to talk about Oxford Village ZBA. Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. This People. is kind of an on off kind of a meeting, depending on whether they have a sufficient amount of requirements for an agenda. And a lot of times you have to check for these meetings because they're often canceled. That's true. They maybe have three meetings a year, depending on the need. Uh, Rose Bama is the uh, chairperson for this uh, ZBA board. Sue Basarded is the newest one, but she's been involved in political situations within the village for years, and her father was as well. Andrew Randall is the newest addition. He just joined this first meeting held on May 6th. And Dave Bailey was absent, but he serves on the board as an alternate, I believe. <clears throat> Terry uh, Onika, as the clerk, uh, does a recording. 
They did the pledge, preliminaries out of the way, minutes for April 1st, again, uh, took care of that. Agenda for May 6th, 2019. Uh, Rose wanted to change the procedure somewhat, amended uh, mm -hmm. in the opening, and, sh and it was approved uh, and on the way that they open <laughs> meetings and they close meetings. Okay. okay, if you want to learn more again, go to OCCTV.org and check on ZBA for May 6th. Must have looked at those Robert's Rules of Orders again. Yep, <laughs> they, they may have done that. Uh, they did look at the charter and all kinds of things, I guess, previous to this meeting. Um, the public hearing was moved to a later uh, position on the calendar here or on the agenda. Correspondence also was moved. Old business, eh, no old business. So the first new business uh, request was for a dimensional variance for 76 East Burdick Street. And uh, that property is owned by Mary uh, Gorsick as the owner. And her mother uh, spoke before the board because uh, Mary couldn't be there. Lynn Gorsick uh, spoke to the board. And it's a family structure, R1 zoned, uh, one family structure. Uh, request is remove existing front porch of the building and put a, a longer porch in wood. It's The awning is there right now, gonna replace the awning. Uh, 15 foot is the requirement uh, from the, for the front yard setback. Meaning and, to the street? Right, and where this is located is on Burdick Street and uh, Glassby Street, right on the corner. Um, and there's 99 feet on uh, one front inch. <laughs> yeah, on Burdick Street, 99 feet, and that's where the house is at. Around the corner is a garage, and there's 82 feet, which encompasses the garage and, uh, and uh, Glassby. Okay, so that covers the description of the property. What they would like to have is the variance for 12.6 feet for setback rather than 15. Okay, you can see where we're going here. Uh, and it has a very interesting situation here in the fact that at one time, that yard was a lot larger. Subasarda pointed out that there was actually a big oak tree or something in front mm -hmm. of the yard, and the road, of course, was much smaller, and the village wanted to widen the road there uh, on both sides, <laughs> which ate up the, the property. You have to watch out anymore. Yeah. You have to look out for Oakland County putting in roundabouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, there goes the house, <laughs> two houses. Yeah, but this is uh, in the village, so I don't think they'll be doing that. You hope. So, yeah, I, I don't think they will. So anyway, so that's the reason for this, is they, the property owner at that time had no real choice. It could have been you know, condemned and ended up you know, having that road through there anyway. Um, so they accepted they're, they're what they had. They're in kind of a delicate position right now at, at that intersection because when MDOT comes through and starts redoing the downtown area, mm -hmm. a lot of traffic is going to be routed down right. Glassby Street up to Ray Road. Right, and they're going to what they call skip patch. In other words, areas along that road need it worse than others. And so they're going to grind up that part and repair that part of the road so it'll handle the heavy traffic. So a lot of things have to be done in, uh, as a preliminary, you know, before mm -hmm. uh, all this activity but that takes place. Intersection will be really busy. <laughs> right. And last night at the township meeting, uh, Oxford Township, uh, it was approved to have a sewage line run down uh, the middle of the road. But it has to be approved by on Oxford Burdick? Village. On Burdick no, or on 24. 24. Oh, on 24. 24. Yep. Oh, okay. When they do that, now is the time to do it. And the reason for that is being able to a a handle additional building structures that are going into Oxford Township and Oxford Village. Okay. For uh, example, uh, the hospital is pretty much going to be, it's approved. They dig down that deep to get to the sewer, it, they might find a lot of interesting but, things. Well, here's the, here's the thing, if they, don't, if they don't do that, and you're right about that, if they don't <laughs> run this sewer line, they have to pump it up. They have to use pumps, mm -hmm. and then they, there's maintenance involved over a period of time to handle the pumps, whereas if you use gravity, you don't have to deal with that. And it's Good an extra expense you know, for the township. Gravity never fails. <laughs> Sometimes it does, depending on what you got down the lower end of the gravity. Only for spinning. <laughs> right, I understand that. Okay, so anyway, that's what's going on uh, with this particular case, and there's a number of reasons uh, they have to be assured. One is uh, for approving this. It has to be unreasonable uh, re uh, restriction. Yes or no. Uh, has to be justice to the owner and other property owners. Will the sewer location-wise be under the road or under the sidewalk? Under the road. 
Hey, down the road. Okay. Yep. M24. Which means manhole covers. More than likely. Yep. Okay. But uh, anyway, that is coming, folks. But now is the time to do this if they're going to do it. Yep. Because, like he says, what's, what's under there? We don't know. Yeah, it could be a whole series well, of issues. Well, there was issues. a lot of stuff back in the 1800s. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> could be hollowed out tree stumps, for all we know. We don't know what's Who going knows? down the there. Archaeologists anyway. may stop all construction when yeah, they take right. a look. Indian burial, <laughs> burial ground. <laughs> so anyway, there's a number of restrictions that you have to go through, you know, questions to determine if this property should be approved or not. A <laughs> um, number of people spoke up for the property owners and said, you know, they really don't have any choice in this. Their property is as it is. And that the 12.6 uh, feet that they're talking about in terms of uh, setback um, should be granted on that okay. purpose. And it would, what they're talking about in terms of building, uh, changing the looks of the building would be an enhancement, you know, to the village in terms of structures and local residents. So, make a rather long story shorter. Have I exceeded that? Sure. Okay. Uh, they did approve it. Um, and let me see, what else occurred? Correspondence, no correspondence, that's where it came in, public hearing. Uh, Jim Bichette, who was with father and son contractors, spoke up uh, concerning this property as well and gave uh, prints and uh, pictures of um, what they proposed to do, and which reiterated the fact that you know this thing go, should go forward, and it did. So that pretty much takes care of the Zoning Board of Appeals, other than one thing I want to mention. Uh, they need two new members. They're too short. Even two, though they they're just too short. Up one? Did you see that? Not too they, tall. But too they, short. they got a new guy right now, don't they? They got a new guy, but they need five members, and okay. I believe they have three. Uh, Mr. Um, Bailey is serving, I think, as a uh, substitute. Okay. okay. So, so we'll have a quorum. Yeah. So if you folks are interested, Zoning Board of Appeals, you don't have to meet every month, but whenever there's business, uh, contact uh, uh, Joe Madur. Mm -hmm. the village manager, and let him know you have an interest. And uh, you go forward. Who knows? You could be on that board. I just want to mention one other thing, Pollyann Trail. You haven't been on the trail lately. Now is the time. It's springtime. It's beautiful. I got to say, Linda Moran, who is the uh, trail manager, is, does a fantastic job. And you see Linda out there with her little gator riding around. By the way, that's not an alligator. Oh, well. Uh, it's four Which wheel would drive. be interesting in its own right. But she's all over. <laughs> we call her Flash. She's here, there, and all over. Doing a great job for the Pollyann right. Trail. Uh, we did People mention. People are surprised how long the Pollyann Trail is, and then from the fact that if you go south, it connects into the Paint Creek Trail. It does, and you can virtually go to, to your Rochester. Heart's Delight. Yes. You can go all the way to Rochester. Yep. Uh, the other thing is the McLaren Hospital. We did mention is a goal. It is going to be built here. It's was mentioned at the meeting last night from the oh, was that 117 beds yep that's what it was and what's they, coming up bud okay we do have some meetings on 520 at 6 p.m the addison township board of trustees will be meeting and at 6 p.m the village of oxford downtown development authority will be meeting possibly a joint meeting with the village for a specific subject um no, rumor rumor <laughs> And on 521 at 7 o'clock, the Addison Township Fire Administrative Board will be meeting. And on 523 at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township Planning Commission will be meeting. Sounds great. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here on Mass by Minute. See you then.